Hey, hello there. Welcome to another video about uh, context-free grammars. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. So um, I've already done, I've sort of explained what a context-free grammar is. I looked at a JavaScript framework, a library called Tracery. And in this video, I want to look at yet another JavaScript library uh, called Rita.js that has uh, a functionality that allows you to generate text based on a grammar. Now, I, I previously made a video about the Rita.js library, which showed some other aspects of it. Um, ways that you can generate and do and evaluate, actually analyze text with the Rita library. And I'll make sure to link to that in this video's description. So I encourage you to check that out. But an aspect that I did not look at is the R, the Rita grammar, the RI grammar object. So how does the RI grammar object work and what kinds of things can you do with it? Okay, so first of all, um, the RI grammar object is designed for use with a context-free grammar. Now, if you're wondering <laughs> what a context-free grammar is, you can double back a couple videos where I maybe talk through it in a bit more detail. But just to remind you, if you're wondering, a context-free grammar is a, is a system to, that defines the structure of a particular language. And in this sense, of, it could be a very small, tiny little language. Like here's a language that has only these elements, sentence, nouns, verbs, and the cat, dog, meows, and barks. So there are terminal and non-terminal characters. These are non-terminal characters, meaning they get replaced with something. Sass for sentence gets replaced with the noun verb. Noun gets replaced with cat or dog. Verb gets replaced with meows or barks. So if I start with sentence, this gets expanded to the NV. The is terminal, so it stays as the. N becomes flip a coin, cat or dog. V becomes flip a coin, cat or dog. And we get this expansion. So um, certainly the idea here is to design sophisticated and interesting grammars with all sorts of creative language in them to generate um, text with some purpose. Maybe you're making automatic uh, you know, Harry Potter spells, or maybe you're making recipes that are going to like randomly generate, and you're going to cook some strange thing for dinner based on what your context-free grammar made you. Lots of possibilities there. But let's see if we can figure out how to make a simple grammar work with the Rita library. And then we'll also look at some um, other examples of grammars um, that you can generate with the Rita library. OK, so. <clears throat> Looking at this, uh, the first thing you might notice is I need to say, make a new Rita grammar uh, object. So let me go to uh, code, and I'm going to say var, I'm going to call it rg, just like uh, in the example. By the way, Rita is by Daniel Howe. Uh, thank you, Daniel Howe, for this wonderful generative uh, text library. I encourage everybody watching to thank Daniel Howe and, and contribute to the development of Rita. Um, rg equals new ri grammar. Now, I'm going to leave the argument here empty. So ultimately, there's a lot of different ways that we might be able to create the grammar. I could do it dynamically in code by just adding the rules, which is what I'm going to try to do right now. Or I could load the grammar from a pre-existing file. And I can mix and match too. But let's try to just dynamically generate it with code. So the first thing I want to do is just looking at this is see if I have an object there. So you can see I have some read a grammar object. It's got like some rules in it. Something's happening, but I can't do anything yet. Now. Um, if I go to here and I say, let me look at a result. Let me expand. Remember, an expansion is expanding from uh, the sort of start of the grammar out and getting a sentence that fits that grammar. Um, so if I get some sort of result and I say console.log result, I should get nothing. So no grammar rules found. So the first thing that I need for a grammar to do anything is to have some rules. So let's look now at the uh, add rule function. So the add rule function requires a, a name. Oh, look at this, a wait. Oh, I love that this has that. That is so fantastic. So it has the rule name and the rule definition and the rule wait. So here's the thing. Uh, we're going to have to figure out what does Rita, and I, I honestly don't know this. I'm going to figure this out while doing the video. What does Rita expect that how this is formatted? So I'm going to look, I'm sure there's an example that I can look at. But on the one hand, I know that I can say rg.addRule. And so I could say maybe like start becomes a sentence. Or, or you know, I could, uh, let me just say the cat meows. There's a rule. Sentence becomes the cat meows. A probability of a weight of one. Now, I doubt that's enough. So. Uh, so that did not work. So I expect that I've got to 
uh, conform to the syntax of the Rita library and how it expects it to work. Now, I'm kind of getting a little clue here. Rule not found start. So I think by definition, Rita probably, ex I'm just guessing from looking at this error, that Rita expects there to be a rule called start. So let's see if that works, if I now get the cat meows. Ah, I did. So now every time I get the cat meows. Now how can I get maybe, so let me see if I can now call this, now I'm expecting maybe if I make a rule that has this syntax with the sort of tag symbols around it, I can say add rule n and I can say cat. So now let's just see if I have a rule which the, set, the start is the n meows and maybe I'm going to get cat. Perfect. Now how do I get, now I have a feeling that the syntax it expects is this. So there are a, a bunch of sort of conventional syntaxes <laughs> um, for uh, grammars. And um, you know, you're going to see them in a variety of different ways. You can like, encode it in JSON, as we saw, in tracery with those sort of pound symbols. Um, this, I believe, is based on some standard. I, I should look it up and try to figure out what it is. <laughs> annotation up here, here to explain. But I have a feeling, based on what I've done before and seen before, that um, uh, it's expecting the pipe symbol as one or the other, right? Let's say what would happen if I didn't do this, okay? Cat dog. Well, I'm going to get the cat dog meows. That's what I'm getting. That's the whole thing that's replaced. But if I put this pipe symbol here, the cat meows, the dog meows, the cat meows, the dog meows. So we can see now the rules. Now one thing I'm curious about is does this require these tags? It does not. The cat, the cat, the cat, the cat, the dog. So, um, so we can see here that the, this, is, this can be a useful distinction just for ourselves to kind of uh, illustrate what I mean to be a you know, non-terminal, maybe put the tag, the, less than, the greater than, less than around it, um, and that can be useful here. So one thing that I'm kind of, um, uh, the other thing that I'm kind of curious about is if I say this, I could also probably put them in a separate line the dog, the dog, the cat, the cat, the dog. And so now let's look at, let's think about this weight. So if I go back now to the documentation and we look at the rule weight, optional defaults to one. So how might I alter the probability? So I'm just going to make sort of a guess that if I do something like five, then I've got kind of a five to one, you know, maybe a five out of six chance of picking cat over dog. And what we could do is I could also do this, uh, you know, maybe a hundred times just to sort of see how this works. Uh, and let's run this. And so you can see here it's picking cat, you know, it picked cat 16 times, then it picked dog, then cat four times, then it picked dog, then cat four times, then cat seven times. So you can see that that weighting allows you to um, add the rules and kind of weight them it, particularly. And I could also probably do cat or unicorn and both, I'm imagining both of those probably have the weight of five and the dog has the weight of one. So if I ran this again, we can see there's going to be a lot of cat and unicorn and not so much dog, I'm sort of guessing. So I'd have to really like strictly evaluate how this is working, but you can see it's nice that you have this ability to manipulate the weights. So if I go back to um, this particular simple scenario, let's just finish implementing that. Um, I'm going to say the noun and I can add a uh, cat, unicorn, dog. I'm going to just leave the default weights um, and then I'm going to add another rule. What sound does a unicorn make? Meows, the cat meows, the dog barks, the unicorn, t t y the twillips. <laughs> That's the sound of a unicorn. It's a word that I made up called twillips. Um, and then I'm going to put a period here. And so now we can see if I generate this, we can see all of these different possible sentences, all which conform to that grammar. So this is a very basic idea. Um, you can imagine how you could make this much more sophisticated through nesting. Um, um, you know, what if, uh, uh, so there's, I, I'm going to kind of like stay away from more exciting and interesting possibilities with this here. I'm just kind of giving you the building blocks. But let's look at actually what happens if you want to encode a grammar, not in your code, but have it come from a separate file. 
and uh, I can look here in the reference and look at load from. Whoops, I clicked on the wrong thing. I'm going to click at load from. So what load from says, load from a file or URL with an option. So in option, the option in JavaScript is going to be a callback because when you ask for a file, you, it's, it's going to happen, the file is going to be loaded asynchronously, so I need to know when the grammar is ready. So there are a bunch of different ways grammar files can be formatted. And uh, a typical way you might see is with a syntax that looks something like this. Um, and I have some examples that, when you look at the code examples that load files that look like this. Here's another sort of way that looks a little bit like JSON. Um, this I found in um, some of Daniel Howe's examples. But uh, Rita, um, so I'm going to try loading this particular file, which is a .grammar file. And uh, whoops, so let me comment this out. And I'm going to say uh, rg.load from uh, test.grammar. And I'm going to say grammar ready. So this is my callback for when the grammar is ready. I'm going to just say ready. So if I do this and run this now, it's going to say, ah, grammar appeals to be, appears to be invalid JSON. Please check it if you're using YAML. So there are so many different kinds of standardized data formats. You know, there's XML markup and YAML and blah, 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 blah. If you've watched some of my data videos, I kind of cover some of these different formats. I think JSON is going to be the easiest format for us to, to encode a grammar and then load it into Rita or another program that we might write. So I actually have already. Um, um, taken this exact grammar and rewritten it using a JSON syntax. And you can see that here. So I have a start, which is a noun phrase or a verb phrase. A noun phrase is a determiner and a noun. A verb phrase could be verb phrase followed by verb followed by a noun phrase or just a verb. So you can see there is some nesting into this grammar. And then here you can see the sort of terminals. Um, and each key has an array for multiple possibilities. So now if I were to go back uh, to my code and load uh, grammar.json, I should at least be able to run this, and I see no error, I just see ready, and now I have a grammar already going, and I could say uh, result equals grammar rg.expand, and then console.log rg. Here we go, and we can see, oh, look at that, what did I just say? rg, no, that was interesting though, result is what I want to see. And we can see the unicorn dances, the unicorn dances the rainbow, the unicorn dances, the rainbow dances, a rainbow dances the rainbow, a unicorn dances, a rainbow dances, a unicorn dances, a rainbow dances, a unicorn dances the rainbow. Somebody could make a song out of that. The unicorn dances the rainbow, the rainbow dances the rainbow, the unicorn dances the unicorn. Okay, so um, yes, please not yaml, someone says in the chat, not to worry. So now we can see here, once again, just as with tracery, it's your job if you want to work with context-free grammars to design the grammar. And this is an effective way of working which, in that you could actually have a completely uh, separate um, file where you put all of the grammar. So this could become very long. In fact, you might start thinking about, hmm, how could I, gen how could I do things like whenever I get to a noun, instead of picking from just a fixed list, actually use the read a lexicon to give me a random noun, or query wordnik to uh, like an API to get a noun from. Um, there's a lot of possible ways you could sort of think about this. Um, one other grammar that I want to show you, which again is thank you to Daniel Howe, the creator of Rita. I'm going to see if I can pull this up because I have it in one of my other examples. Ah, this one. So let's see if this works. I'm going to copy paste this grammar. And I'm just going to put it, I'm just going to overwrite here grammar.json, paste it in, hit save, and I'm going to run it. And we can see now, and, and actually what I'm going to do is let's, 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 um, let's get, be a little bit more sophisticated about this. Sophisticated. This is a very, this is a very sophisticated cooking show. I, by the way, this is called the cooking show now because I'm like cooking, cooking with code. Maybe that's it. Uh, button equals create button, generate, uh, button dot mouse pressed. This is, I'm using the P5 DOM library to attach a click event to a button. Um, and I'm going to say a new haiku. Um, and then I'm going to say function new haiku. Uh, and I'm going to say, var, and now I'm going to do here, I'm going to get the result is expand the grammar. And then I'm going to say create P result. So let me run this. And we should see, ah, result is not defined, line 12. Uh, I forgot that I have some extra code there. So the idea here is that I generate and I get these haikus. Now, a couple things about this. 
why is there this percent sign in there? So one of the things you can do when designing a grammar is kind of create your own protocol. Like I really, what I want to have is like a BR tag there. So I could just go into the grammar and just do this, which will probably work. Um, and because I'm outputting to HTML, I'm getting a BR tag, but I might be outputting to other things and I actually want to replace that with a line break. So, but you can see here, let's look at how this grammar works. This is an interesting way that you can use a grammar to generate uh, a haiku. So the haiku form is a complex thing. <laughs> there is a variety of ways you can sort of think of haiku, but here's one scenario. A line with five syllables, a line with seven syllables, and a line with five syllables. So, um, that is the start uh, axiom. Then here are all a bunch of ways you can create a line with five syllables. A one syllable followed by a four syllable. A one syllable followed by a three or a one. A one, a one, three, one, two, two, one, two, one, one. So you can see here's a whole set of possibilities. Here are possib possibilities for seven line. Notice how I'm reusing the five line here because I could have one, one, five line, two, five line, five line, one, one, or five line, two. And then here's a whole lot of one syllable words. This is all from Daniel Howe, uh, a whole lot of two-syllable words, a whole lot of three-syllable, not just words, but phrases, four-syllables, etc. So now, if I were to run this, we can see I'm always going to get cranes, Japan, uh, I'm going to get uh, uh, five syllables, cranes, Japan, day, breaks, followed by seven, dawn, smoke, Japan, dawn, rushing, followed by five syllables, through, smoke, juniper. So I encourage you to think about what might be some creative ways you can write a grammar to generate text. And um, now we've seen how you can do this same type of context-free grammar with tracery. We've seen how you can do, do it with the Rita library. And in the next video, which, I, um, which will be coming at some point if it's not already there, I'm going to just kind of look at the basic recursive algorithm for doing this expansion from scratch in case you at some point want to start playing around with um, the sort of guts of how the context-free grammar generation system works. Okay, thanks for watching.